imagine being so sick and not having a doctor who could properly diagnose you? Well, our next guest has had her life completely turned upside down by a condition that she says is so unusual, so hard to explain, she's even afraid to tell her, whole, her own family about it. I feel like bugs are inside of me. It feels like something's actually biting my eye. There's pinprick sensations on your skin. You get really itchy. It's totally like a bad science fiction story. It's like pure evil, I swear. I have more Gallen's disease. It's not a recognized disease. The medical society has shunned us. I saw a doctor who told me I was delusional. I feel like if people can't see it, they don't believe it. I'm sad all the time. I'm depressed all the time. Before I had this disease, I was definitely a happier person. I was one of the first female professional snowboarders in the 1990s, and it was really great. It's bad. I just want a cure so I can live my life like a normal person again. Crystal, you're devastated by this illness. Yes, I am. And, and reading about your story, it almost seems like you're ashamed and humiliated because you can't explain it to people. Yes, that's true. Talk to me about what it's been like to have an illness that no one knows about, and we don't have any good ideas about what's going on. It's very frustrating. I've been to numerous doctors, and they've tried to help me, but I never get cured. This and describe to me all of the symptoms that you're having. I feel like bugs are biting me. It's, just, it's a feeling like someone's taking a little pin and just pricking me with it. And I feel them, I feel those feelings in my eyes, which is the worst, because I feel like they're biting my eyes. And I have no idea if it's actually bugs biting me or if it's things already in my bloodstream trying to come out of me. Arms, legs. Everywhere. Back, everywhere. stomach, yeah. everywhere. Everywhere. And how frustrated are you with us, with doctors? I've been pretty frustrated, yeah, pretty frustrated. I, I just want to get over this and have a normal life again. And so far, no one's really been able to solve it for me. When I went through medical school, Morgellons was not even a word. Yeah. It was not even a word. And this is something that we don't understand a lot about. And there's a lot of conf Or is there a possible cure? The answer is coming up. I'm sure those of you at home are wondering, what is this Morgellons? And I have to admit, until a year and a half ago, I had never even heard of it. It's a rare condition where people say it feels like parasites are crawling under their skin. People who have it, they're often told they're delusional, it's all in your head. As for Crystal, this has been a very unfortunate reality. We do have one person in the audience today, Dr. Bill Harvey, who is one of the leading experts on research with Morgellons. And he's one of the few people who claims to have had real success in treating this condition. And Dr. Harvey, I'm so intrigued to talk with you about this because so few doctors even acknowledge this is a disease. And I have to tell you, I'm confused myself. Actually, the first thing you really need to know about Morgellons is that Morgellons is in no medical book. And in fact, the word wasn't even brought up from the history of medicine until 2002 by a person whose child had something like you have and she had no idea how to get it uh, solved and no physician that could give her an answer. So she wound up going back to the history books and found something that sounded like this from France uh, in the 1600s and it was called the Morgellons. Then she wound up starting a website, decided that she would put on the website the fact that her son had symptoms like this, described some of the symptoms, called the Morgellons, beginning that period of time, this disease was born. So we've, so we've established that Morgellons is a, a new condition that very few doctors know about. Maybe. Because maybe 50 years ago, something came into the medical parlance called delusions of parasitosis. People who had parasites crawling on them and they didn't, the docs couldn't find them.
The assumption was that it was a delusional problem, that there are no bugs. Patients had come in to see me being told that they had delusions of parasitosis, but they really looked like they were sick. And I decided to begin to take a look, and so did other physicians. And this was maybe six years ago. And indeed, what started to come from this was the fact that, well, there's something going on emotionally that's really disturbing, but there's something physical that's stunning here. And that was the beginning of our starting to understand. And getting past this disease is not an undoable thing. And I'm, I'm going to play devil's advocate because I want to play the position of a physician on the other side of the fence, which is we do have infectious disease experts out there who've looked at some of these people who have a condition similar to yourself, and they're saying that they're not finding any infectious cause, but it seems like you're convinced this is partly caused by an infection, that you're treating with antibiotics. Well, there and there are going to be a lot of physicians out there who say that you're just throwing the, the kitchen sink at this thing, but you don't really know what you're doing. And that's just me playing devil's advocate. No, that's important because that's the world that they're facing out there. From the very beginning, from the first patient that I saw, I had the ability at least to magnify skin areas to 220 power and started to see something unusual. Found out that the body really is covered with different kinds of things, parasite, bacteria, and or virus. We were able to begin not to shotgun this thing with many different kinds of antiparasitics or antibacterials, but one antiparasitic in particular. And we think the fact that they respond well to treatment just implies that we are dealing with agents. We had veterinarians that came in and helped us out from the beginning because they know so much about parasites. And the fact that parasites do certain things at certain times, like they move around from 1 to 3 a.m., that's when patients often feel them moving around. They don't feel them in the afternoon, and you can read it in any veterinary book. Many humans are infected with these things, but they're mostly third world countries, and we really hadn't paid a lot of attention to that in this country. The fact that you have it is a very special reason that we're only now coming into, probably, in this society and the second and first world countries. Well, I have two things I want to say to you, and first is, I'm not sure yet what Morgellons is. But I do know I believe you. And Dr. Harvey has agreed to take you on as a patient. Thank you. I'm crying because I'm happy. I know you're happy. And more research needs to be done. And the Center for Disease Control is now funding some research, trying to figure out what exactly is going on here. More needs to be done. But I think, if nothing else, Dr. Harvey sees some results. So let's try it. And maybe we'll figure out a few years down the road exactly what we're dealing with. But until then, we at least wanted to get you some help. Okay? Thank you. And, and hopefully you two can also work through this together because I know that She's dependent upon you to understand that no one understands what's going on, and it's not her fault. If, any, if anything, it's our fault, but that's the way medicine is. New things come up all the time that we don't fully understand, and you just have to be patient with Crystal because this isn't easy for her either. So thank you both for being here. Dr. Harvey, thank you.